Hello everyone. I want to give some feedback on the second task that we've done this week, the one where we looked at the decision making process and some of the tools that you can use to help you make decisions. So first of all, I'm going to go straight to the um, information that Miss Jan has posted that very clearly points out the main mistakes that people are making right at the beginning of the process. In step one, you are identifying the problem. You are looking to see what's the problem. You are not trying to find a solution. You're not deciding anything. There are no decisions to be made. There are no solutions to be offered. You are just trying to work out what the problem is. So no decision tool needed. In step two, same thing. No decision tool needed because you are not evaluating anything you are generating ideas, you're thinking of things that you could do. You are trying to make a list of possible solutions. No decision-making tool needed. Step three of the decision-making process is where you start to make decisions. And this is where you might need to use a tool. In step three, you are looking at all the uh, possible solutions that you came up with in step two, and you're going to decide which one you should use. So here you could make a decision using an evaluating tool such as a balance sheet, for example. So let's have a look at the um, steps one by one, just to be clear what they all um, actually mean. So when we talk about identifying the problem, this means, okay, people are complaining. When we identify the problem, the problem is not people are complaining, the problem is whatever it is they're complaining about. So why are people complaining? What's the problem? Why are we losing money? We are losing money. It's not, it is a problem, but it's not the root of the problem. It's not the cause of the problem. And this is what we need to do in step one. Identify what's causing the problem. Once we know that, we can go to step two and we can uh, think of things that we can do to fix the problem. We're still not making decisions. We're just coming up with ideas. And we could use a brainstorm here to think of all the things that we could do to prevent the problem occurring or to fix the problem. In step three, evaluate and choose a solution. We look at the um, solutions that we came up with and choose one. And we might want to use a decision tool here to help us choose which one is the, the best best solution for us to use. In the fourth step, we implement and monitor that solution. So we apply the solution and we keep checking that the application is running smoothly, that what is supposed to happen is happening and that the problem doesn't occur anymore, that it is fixing the problem. When it comes to the fifth step, evaluate, a lot of people had trouble with this and a lot of people just actually left it off. They didn't address it. And I can kind of understand why, because step four is implement and monitor. Monitor and evaluate are very similar things. I think of it a little bit like um, Cotter's change management. The eighth step is like the new normal, integrating change into your practice. Well, now the change is normal and is integrated into your practice, but you still need to evaluate and make sure that there are no um, unwanted side effects further down the line. There's nothing that can be tweaked to make it better, or perhaps that you could apply this fix to some other problem area in your business. So let's have a look at um, a case study. Um, now, when, when, when you're asked to do a case study, to come up with a business or some idea, what we really want to know is, do you understand the theory that we're discussing and can you apply it to a case study? 
we're not very interested in um, how brilliant your case study is or how um, what, what kind of situations you come up with. We just want to know that you can match the theory to a situation. You can explain, identify the problem. You would do this when you identify a problem. You would do this when you choose a solution. This is an appropriate decision uh, making tool to use when you are evaluating your choices. That's what we want to know. We're not really interested in the, um, the scenarios so much, as long as they match what you're saying. So anyway, here's my scenario. Uh, retail store can't cope with online um, orders. So identify the problem. So maybe the problem is caused because most people order towards the end of the week and we don't have any more staff on at the end of the week, just at the beginning of the week. So we need to um, generate some solutions. So this is where a brainstorm would be useful. How can we fix this? In the third step, where you evaluate the solutions, you look at the solutions you created in the second step. So um, maybe one solution could be changing shifts, another could be hiring extra staff, and the third one would be open a new distribution center. So perhaps you could use a balance sheet to find out which is the best one. So you're not going to compare um, open a new distribution center to change the shifts, but you're going to look at each scenario separately, each possible solution separately, and weigh the um, factors for change and the factors against change, the pros for change and the cons against change. So you look at, um, what if we change the shifts? What are the advantages there and what are the disadvantages there? And if they come out more or less similar or the same, might not be interested in that solution. So have a look at um, hiring extra staff. And maybe you can see that there are lots more advantages or the forces for change add up to more than the forces against change. So that's a contender. We'll think about that one. And then the third possible solution would be to open a new distribution center. Um, perhaps the costs of finding a new center, uh, the time, the, 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 the problems with location would mean that the forces against change are stronger than the forces for change. So let's choose um, hire more staff. So, Number four, implement the chosen solution. So extra staff have been hired. It might not be the cheapest, it might not have all the advantages, but it seems to work best in the short term. It fixes the problem for now. And we can monitor the situation, and we've hired some, um, allocated some staff to do that. Monitoring the situation, see how it pans out, are we going to need to look more seriously at opening um, a new distribution center or can we carry on like this? That's what we need to know at this stage. And if it's working, it's working. If it's not working, it's not working. But if it's working, just let it run on. But we need to evaluate. We need to keep evaluating in our business to make sure that we're always doing the right thing, that we are on the best track that we can be. So. Even though things have improved, um, perhaps we could improve them a little bit more by um, changing the rosters, being a bit more flexible with the work rosters. So let's make a decision tree to see if actually doing that compared to not changing the rosters would have um, advantages for us, financial advantages or time management advantages. So that's all we're asking for when we give you um, a case study to look at. We just want you to repeat the jargon back at us, show that you understand the theory by um, applying it to uh, something that you could do or something that you should do, something that is relevant to the jargon. If you have any uh, more questions about the, the, the five-step process for decision making or decision making tools in general, you can comment on the uh, YouTube video here, or you can use the Google Doc for questions and answers, the general question and answers doc, or you can email your teacher. Okay, 
See you for the next task. Bye-bye.